Hi, this is Igor from HDHead.com. This series of Resolve tutorials was really aimed at colorists who haven't been exposed to visual effects or haven't really worked in Fusion, just to give them an idea of what's possible in Resolve 15, which now incorporates Fusion. This topic, however, is a little heavier. I hope that you're going to stick around because you will see some of the really interesting and unique ways in which Resolve can be incorporated into your pipeline. All the scripting functionality was inherited from, from Fusion, so let's go to Fusion to open up the console, and now we can go back to the media page. This nice little console is provided for your convenience. You can um, execute one-liners from here, load up scripts, run scripts from here. You can use Lua, Python 2, or Python 3. I am conversant in Python, so I'm going to stick with that. I haven't really used Lua. but I won't really show you how to use this. I prefer plain Windows command line. This is pretty neat, but there are a couple of problems with it. To show you why I don't like it, let's assign a value to this variable A. And if I say A, it echoes back the name of the variable, not the value. So that's not how normally the Python interpreter behaves. If Let's launch the Python interpreter. So if I go A, it gives me the value of the variable. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is I like how this Windows 10 console now has translucency so I can see what's going on behind. So we will close this and just use the Windows console. Cool. Now, if you have Python experience, especially object-oriented experience, that will really help at this point. So you'll understand better what I'm doing. I'm going to import the module that comes with uh, DaVinci Resolve script as DVR. This is a module that ships with Fusion. And uh, before I go much further, let me just tell you the documentation and a couple of examples included in Windows uh, and other platforms, but in Windows at this path, program data, black magic design, and so forth. There's a readme file. Before you can do anything in Windows, you have to set these system environment variables but this is incorrect so it's not going to work if i have time i'll write an article on my website how to set this up correctly we'll close that so uh we imported the module uh we're going to instantiate the resolve object script app um resolve and a couple of other objects uh there's uh, the pm i'm going to call the project manager pm we'll get that from resolve get project manager Oh, it's capital G. Here's an object for the, for the current project. Call it proj equals pm. Get current project. Uh, we'll also get the current timeline. Call it tl. That we inherit that from proj. I see what the problem was again. Capitalization. Get capital G. Okay, let's create a project for the media pool. We'll call it MP. All right, so let's see what this API allows us to do. Let's get the project frame rate. 23976. Let's get the name of the current sequence. Resolve water surface, that's the name of the sequence. Actually, if I switch to this kind of view, timelines, there it is or up there. Let's get the starting time code of that sequence. There's the time code. It's expressed in frames, but uh, that can be converted into SMPTE time timecode. I'm, I'm going to switch to the edit page now so you can get a better idea of the next thing I'm going to do. Uh, this one is going to be a little long. Proj set current timeline. I just loaded another timeline. Let's load the second timeline. There's a second timeline. Let's load the third timeline in this project. So you see, you can force Resolve to load timelines. It gets even better. Let's go back to the media page. So let's try this. Uh, MP is the object for media pool. So MP. Create empty timeline. Some name. And watch what's going to happen. It's right there. New timeline we created. It's an empty timeline, but it was created from command line. Okay, moving on, I will create a root folder object. I call it folder. Media pool get 
get root folder. Let's check the name of that folder. So we can go folder, get name, master. That is the resolves top level bin or folder. Now let's instantiate an object that represents the clips in this folder. Let's see what's inside of that clips object. It's a dictionary where each key value pair represents one clip on the timeline. So let's look at the individual clips. So we can say clips 2.0. Uh, so the keys are floating point numbers. Get name. This will give us a human readable name of this clip. Bus MP4. So the clip at index position 2 is called bus MP4. It's right there. I'm going to select that clip. Let's click on it. Open the metadata pane. Let's look at all groups. In the metadata description field, I typed in content. We can change that. Let's change it to new note. We can read and write that metadata, although I haven't been successful in writing it. I, that's not true. I, ha I have been successful in writing it, but for some reason, I, I'm not able to see it within a resolve. However, the metadata is there. As I said, the documentation for this API is still a work in progress. Let's see what's in clip one meta. And as you can see in this dictionary, there's a description, which is the name of this metadata field, and a new note, which is the, the, te the text, the content that I entered in there. So all of this can be read, and uh, I mean, you can do crazy stuff with it. But there's more. Remember how we created that sum name sequence? You can actually create a sequence and add clips to it. So let's try that. Media pool. Create timeline from clips. This is the name of the timeline. And I will use one clip, and that's the clip 2.0, the one we've been uh, using to read the metadata. Clips at key 2.0. Here it is, name of the timeline. It became the current sequence. Let's open it on the edit page. Now, let me see if I remember how to do this. To timeline. Appending to timeline. We can append clips to timeline. Let's see if that works. It does. Um, see it returned true and added a clip at the end of the timeline. And I can add as many clips as I want, programmatically even. All right, let's go back out to the media page. In addition to creating sequences, you can also create bins and, and you can import media. So let's try to import media to media pool. We'll define the media storage, call it MS. And the syntax is the object name dot add items to media pool. And then the path, I'm just going to copy and paste that path from an open window I have. And we'll go slash image DPX. Oh. Of course, that is a string that needs to be indicated as such in double or single quotes. Okay, I think I see what I've done wrong. I'm going to go a couple of steps back. This was missing brackets. All right, now that should work. And there's the image DPX that we have just added. It's that same bus, but black and white that was pulled from, from this directory right here. I hope you're starting to see what can be built with these basic building blocks. You can build automation where a script is monitoring whether rendered shots are in place, and if they are, it can pull them into Resolve, sort them out in their directories, get the metadata out, um, do reporting on that stuff, create timelines, cut the shots into the timelines. You can conform, automate some of the things that assistants would be doing. It is quite powerful. Oh, and then I didn't show you this. Open page. See, you can force switching of pages. I put together a couple of little apps to demonstrate this. Here's a little proof of concept app. Uh, it's a, a page switcher written in Python and Qt. Of course, it's pretty useless because all of these buttons are available down here anyway, but uh, but this could be combined with some sort of remote access where you can actually switch these pages remotely if you're not sitting at this workstation. I have a variation on that theme. It's another quite useless app. It's a page flipper. Let's start. 
it's flipping through resolve pages and I can slow it down. I think the interval now is about seven seconds or I can cut it down to about to half a second speed. Perhaps useful, perhaps not. Maybe uh, could be used for like a demo situation where you need a resolve to just cycle through pages so people can look at it or something like that. But uh, I don't really intend to use that for anything. It was just a little test and practice. And I have another one. Uh, it's called Resolve Clips Poll. What this has done, you might have seen, uh, it created these two files. We have a comma separated values file and an HTML file representing the clips in the master bin. Separated by comma, okay. Here are the clips. Let me just open the bin so you can see that these match. Sorted by numbers, clip name, black, that's a, a compound clip. Bus is a video clip. We have two timelines, a video clip, frame rates, durations in frames, and resolution. That's one way to present this information, but also have a static web page version that it just formats that into a, a very uh, dumb HTML table. No immediate purpose for any of this, but just I want you to see what's possible. As of the date of this recording, which is 4th of May 2018, I've only had a few hours uh, playing with scripting and Fusion, so I think there's a lot more that uh, can be tapped into, especially when the, the product is finalized and we have the final documentation. I will give my best to make these uh, scripts available on uh, GitHub or my website or both. Thank you for watching. My name is Igor and you can download this and other Resolve-oriented tools from uh, my website hdhead.com.